So uh, are there other, so you kind of transition out of that, you begin at, at MIT, are there other things early on in your career that you see as, as significant, whether they're kind of people or other significant events or, or sort of milestones in your own development? Yeah, I think the, the next one that happened was at MIT, I was still going to be an experimentalist, but Doug McGregor in his inimitable way suggested that maybe I should learn something about these human relations labs mm. that had been spawned by Kurt Lewin and uh, <clears throat> Lippitt and uh, Lee Bradford that were going on at Bethel, Maine in the late 50s. So I took my family for the three weeks uh, in, uh, in Bethel, mm -hmm. and I would say that changed my course in a major way because I discovered that in the T group, mm -hmm. the sensitivity training approach was a mm -hmm. whole different learning model. Mm. Instead of being taught group dynamics, I was thrown into a group to learn group dynamics mm. from watching others and watching myself. And at first I fought that. I thought that was really a stupid way to spend time <laughs> since I already knew all that right, stuff. Right. But the day I realized that I'm acting out what I know mm -hmm. was a major kind of discovery that it's really in almost more interesting to see these phenomena in yourself mm. than to have seen them in an experimental context. So I became very enamored of what has come to be called and taken for granted as experiential learning, yeah. which today we forgot that that didn't exist before the 50s, that Kurt Lewin and that whole program right. created, turned the, the learning process upside down. Interesting. And to me, that's been the hallmark of how I do research ever since. Uh, field work, observation, observe people doing stuff rather than setting up careful experiments.